our Vox Libera Award is presented to a Canadian or a group of Canadians who demonstrate an outstanding commitment and contribution to freedom of expression for their incredible work in defense of their community and for their advancement of free expression and access to information, we are extremely pleased to name NWAC, the 2014 CJFE Vox Libera Award winner. Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome Let me welcome Dr. Dawn Harvard, NWAC's first Vice President and President of the Ontario Native Women's Association to accept the Vox Libera. Congratulations. Thank you so very much to everybody for having us here tonight. I'm very honored to be in the presence of so many like-minded people. As I'm sure you're all aware, it takes great courage to stand up and expose the truth. Unfortunately for us, the treatment of Indigenous peoples in Canada has been a shameful secret for far too long. As a nation, when we are collectively appalled by the abuse and violence inflicted upon women, in other parts of the world, we rush to send aid overseas to far and distant deserts while we consistently, and perhaps for some deliberately, ignore what goes on in our own backyards. And communities, but a few miles down the road from your own town. It's sad to say, but violence against Aboriginal women and girls has become normalized in this country. It has been accepted. When families go to report that their loved one is missing, they're told, that's one less welfare check that we have to pay for. That's one less hooker on my beat. Comes from the cops. When we started this work back in 1989, we did a report, and we found that eight out of 10 Indigenous women were victims of violence, of abuse. No one believed us. Then 15 years later, in 2005, when we went to Kelowna to talk about the issues facing our people, the leadership, both Aboriginal leadership and the Government of Canada said they didn't want to put violence against Indigenous women and girls on the agenda. They wanted to discuss real issues like land claims and economic development because violence would deal with itself. Now, 10 years later, here we are at events like this one tonight. Finally, ending violence is not only on the agenda, it is the agenda. The crisis of missing and murdered Aboriginal women and girls is not an Aboriginal problem. It is not a women's issue. This is a national tragedy and a national shame. I was recently challenged by one of my elders who said, why do you always talk about missing and murdered? I said, well, they're missing and they're murdered. Made sense to me. <laughs> and I said, duh. <laughs> and she said, no, they're not missing. They're not like so many misplaced keys or your wallet or your sunglasses. These women and girls were stolen. They were stolen from our families and from our communities. And I'll give you a little example of why. Here in Canada, over 93% of the victims of human trafficking are Canadian. And a disproportionate number of those are Aboriginal women and girls. And to have arguments about whether prostitution is a choice or a right is ludicrous when you find out that the average age for these women that they entered, that they were recruited into the sex trade, is 13 years. We know how averages work, like grade five math. So that means for every 15-year-old, for every 16-year-old, there were that many nine-year-olds, 10-year-old girls. Our girls as young as eight are being recruited in the parks on their way home from school. 
this is the reality of what's happening right here in our country, in our own backyards, in our own streets. And last summer, when I was talking about this, I mean, we all know what it's like. We talk about these things, and a child who Denver hears, she says, I didn't hear you the first three times you called me, Mommy. But say prostitution, and their ears perk up. And so she asked, what is this all about? And I had to explain to her that what was going on, the rates, the missing women, the murdered women. And she said, but we're native, right, Mommy? I said, yeah. And then she says, and I'm a girl. Yeah. And I could see the light go on. And she said, does that mean I'm in danger? And I wanted to say, no, of course. I will take care of you. Mommy will protect you. And I realized it's not that simple. Here in Canada, I can't promise that because we know the situation. Sorry. But that's why this is so important that we're here tonight. Because as my grandfather always told me, if you are not part of the solution, you are part of the problem. So to be here tonight with so many people who have the courage to stand with us and support us, because it's not a popular place to be, shows that you are all willing to be part of that solution, to take up our cause and carry this story forward. And for that, I truly, truly thank you. Thank you.